For the first time since the 1990s, the United States intends to produce new Abrams tanks. U.S. Army Armored Fist unveiled tanks Abrams, the production of which was discontinued back in 1996, and since then the production of new modifications of main battle tanks has been carried out by re-equipping old vehicles. Apparently, the Ukrainian experience of using tanks showed the Pentagon their vulnerability on the battlefield, regardless of the type of equipment, which requires uninterrupted supplies of main battle tank to troops in order to make up for losses. Under these conditions, improving old models is no longer enough, and therefore the United States intends to resume production of new tanks. As indicated in the American publication LimaOhio.com, representatives of the concern General Dynamics Land Systems said that the Lima, Ohio-based plant for the production of tanks and other armored vehicles will receive significant investment from the U.S. government in the coming years. Already in 2028, the enterprise's budget should amount to $287,001 million and a year later, $300 million. Investments will mainly be aimed at modernizing the plant's capacities. In the near future, production lines should be largely automated and robotic. The JSMC plant, which repairs existing tanks, will produce new hulls for main battle tanks for the first time since the 1990s, says the publication. JSMC is currently up upgrading Abrams to the M1A2 SEP V3 version and producing striker wheeled combat vehicles in the latest DVH A1 version M Shorad air defense missile systems on their chassis and recently began assembling the first batches of M10 Booker light tanks. In addition, hulls and some components are produced for the Israeli Neymar heavy armored personnel carriers based on the Merkawa MK4 main battle tank. The plant produces equipment for the USA as well as for countries such as Australia, Israel and Taiwan. He recently completed an order for Ukraine. The publication says without specifying what they are talking about, perhaps about the restoration of the Abrams or striker for the Ukraine. There are now 856 civilian workers working here, although a few years ago their number dropped to 400. Moreover, the enterprise has a colossal capacity of 150,000 square meters. At the same time, its equipment allows it to lift loads weighing up to 80 tons and perform complex welding work using difficult to process materials such as titanium, high strength armor, rolled homogeneous armor, aluminium and composites. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky visited Kharkiv and visited the publishing house that was hit by a missile attack by the Russian army on May 23. Zelensky said that as a result of the incident, the industrial complex was destroyed and tens of thousands of books were burned. Recalling that seven people died and 21 people were injured, the president said that Russia is waging a war against humanity. Russia's terrorism must never go unanswered. 50,000 books were burned as a result of the attack on Kharkiv. It shows that Russia is waging a war against humanity and aspects of normal life. Russian terrorists kill children and adults, destroy towns and villages, and wreak havoc in places where normal life once existed. Russian terrorism must be defeated. All we need for this is the determination of Western leaders, sufficient air defense systems to protect Ukrainian cities, and all our long-range strike systems, says Zelensky. Поэтому учебники, литература и так далее сегодня просто это национальная проблема становится. Мы не сможем их подпечатать в этом году 100% в срок, если мы быстро не восстановим.